Hey guys, welcome back to the William Walker Company Project Channel. I'm Will Walker, and this time I'm making this giant wall clock. Stay tuned. For this project, I'm using pallet wood. A, it's free, and B, it already has the weathered patina I'm looking for. I know a lot of folks just cut the pallet wood at the nails, but I need the longer length, so I pry all the slats apart and pull all the nails. Once you have enough boards to get the width of the clock you're making, lay them out in the order that you think looks best. I'm making a 36 inch clock. Pallet wood varies in thickness, so make sure you put one of the thickest pieces in the middle where the center of the clock will be. One of my pieces had a check at the bottom, leaving a flared out edge, leaving a big gap between boards. So I took it over to the table saw and ripped the flare off. Now that you have all your pieces lined up, flip them over into the opposite side of the pile. Essentially, you're flipping the whole panel over, just doing it one board at a time. I had a scrap piece of poplar laying around in the shop, but pretty much anything would work here. I had three quarter inch material, but I think a two by two would have been perfect. Now screw it all down with one inch wood screws. I didn't pre-drill because I like to live life dangerously. If you're worried about it splitting, pre-drill, but nobody's gonna see it. I used my Japanese hand saw to cut the excess off, but use whatever you have to cut it. This is going to be cut again anyway. Then I squared off one edge and drew a reference line so when I screwed what would become the top piece of the clock on, the clock would hang level once hung. I used a long straight edge to draw diagonals from corner to corner to find the dead center of the panel. My clock hands are 18 inches, so I took another piece of scrap I had in the shop and cut a 20 inch piece, making two holes 18 inches apart. If you didn't have a piece of scrap, a cheap yardstick from the Big Blue store would work well too. Now I put a screw through one end and screw it onto the center mark that we just made. And I take a marker and draw a circle. Then cut the circle out with the jigsaw. Pro tip, if you're having a hard time, try changing the blade. I found my center lines for 12, 6, 3, and 9 and marked those. I drilled the hole for the shaft of the clock movement per the manufacturer's specs. Then I traced the outline of the clock movement. I used a Forstner bit to hog out some material, then used a chisel to refine it. A router with a straight bit would make short work of this, but routers are loud and my daughter is sleeping. The key here is to have enough of the shaft clear through the other side so the hands can move freely. Once I had enough clearance on the shaft, I used some more scrap to pad out the back of the clock so the movement wouldn't touch the wall when it's hung. If I had used 2 by 2s like I suggested, I wouldn't have to do this. Knock down any rough edges with some 120 grit sandpaper. I'm using solid stain left over from the exterior trim on our house. This is a Benjamin Moore color called Timid White. I start by stenciling 12, 3, 6, and 9.
Then I tried my best to place the other numbers by finding an equal measurement in between numbers. The best way to do this would be to use a protractor or a wedge cut to 30 degrees, but I didn't have either of those. Now it's time to add the hour and minute hands to the clock. I used a couple of drywall screws to add some picture hanging wire to the back. To hang it, I found the center of the space I wanted to put it and used a hanger made by Ook that says it's rated for 100 pounds. The clock doesn't weigh nearly that much, so I think it'll be alright. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Um, I made this project for Jess's birthday and she absolutely loved it. So it would make a great gift idea um, for the holidays coming up. I'll put a link in the description to the clock movement and the hands that I used. I got off of Amazon. Um, I used 18 inch long hands. Uh, so I made a 36 inch wiring clock, but if you didn't have a wall that big or you just simply wanted to make a slightly smaller clock, um, you could use smaller hands, but the same movement. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe. Uh, maybe give me a thumbs up down below. Uh, leave a comment. I love comments. I love hearing what people think or suggestions on what they would have done differently. Or um, one guy uh, really hated the music that I was using. So this video I changed it up a little bit um, to, to see what you guys think. The editing is a little bit different. Um, let me know. I don't know. Check out some of my other videos too. I'm having a lot of fun making these um, and showing people uh, that it's not that hard to make this kind of stuff. So uh, again, like, subscribe, share this with <coughs> everyone you know, um, blast it, from, shout it from the rooftops. Uh, until next time, I'll catch you guys later.